Hiya, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rosie Henshaw. If you're new here, then welcome. It's lovely to meet you. And if you're already existing, then hi guys, welcome back. So I'm filming this on Friday, what will be Friday, so yesterday, because I'm film uploading this today, which is Saturday. So that's right, that's correct. So I'm basically doing a couple of crafts at the table, um, getting a few little things that you can be doing over while isolation. And I just thought, one of the things that you always really love is when we do the DIY wreaths. Um, so we've done like an autumn one, like a Halloween-y type one, we've done Easter one, spring one. We've done a few different types. Um, we also done the one with the car tire wheel and we've done all like jute round it. But I thought this might be a craft that most of you would be able to do just because a lot of you have been following it with me um, and making these. And what I do is I just have one wreath throughout the years and I just change this one up. So this is a eucalyptus wreath. This is one I've used for my Valentine's one, the Christmas one, all of them. And it's really holding up well. I've had this for about two years now. It really does last. And the reason I purchased this, it cost me about £39, £40, something like that, online. And I just typed in eucalyptus ring. I think the range sells something like this similar now as well. Now it's come to um, summer months, like a bit more warmer. Um, but the reason I got this is because every Christmas I'd buy a proper reef and it would always die. It cost me about 25 to 30 pounds. So I thought by the time I've even used this two or three times, I've got my money back. Do you know what I mean? I, I can use it all the time and change it up. And all I've changed this up with is simple foliage from the range. Um, our Christmas one, we've added like extra little Christmas decorations, Easter, we added carrots and stuff. We can just add whatever you like to this, but the one I'm gonna do today is the summer one. I feel like my door needs cheering up. I'm probably gonna hang this on the inside of my door, just so I get to see it. Every time I go in the hallway, it really brighten it up. And I really love these flowers. I've been really looking forward to showing you guys these ones. Um, because obviously some videos, if I see something and I think, oh, I'm gonna be doing that video ahead, so, I see some bits and I think, oh, I'll put that away. And I know that you're going to love these. Um, so as it started to become spring, they started selling these in the range. Um, these are the most beautiful, big coloured, like, I don't even know what these are meant to be. But they're like coral coloured, so with a little bit of orangey tinge and a little bit of pink as well. Absolutely beautiful. These stems are £2.50 each. No, these ones aren't. These are the £1.99 ones. Um, so these are £1.99 each. I had two of them. Um, these ones were £1.95, I've got like a white hydrangea, these are lovely, this wasn't actually meant to be part of this, this was going to be in a jar with some eucalyptus on my um, fireplace in my tall jug, this is when I got this, when I got the tall jug I thought that would look really nice and they look really realistic, really realistic. And then this one, I think this one was like £1.75 and I don't know what this one is, um, it's, well, actually I think the price is still on it, no it doesn't. Peony, this is a peony dusky pink, um, and it's just so pretty, just so, so lovely. Um, so I've got these, I've also got some eucalyptus, I've always got these on the go, these are always in my cupboard because I'm always changing them up, putting them in jars. I just think they look really pretty around the house, and if you don't want to keep buying real flowers, they're just something nice and green to add a little bit of colour to the house without having to constantly be getting greenery from the florist. So I really, really like these. And these, I think these are £2.75. They used to be a lot cheaper, but I think they're very popular. Um, so grab yourself a nice hot drink and some snacks. I've just done my memo book video, which would have been up yesterday. Um, so my tea's freezing. Um, but <laughs> do you know what? I thought I'd do a couple of videos, get into it and show you. So all you're going to need is some little like pliers to cut this with, this is what I like to cut it with with some really sharp scissors and I've got a little bit of florist wire. You can use glue gun, like glue stick to glue these in, but actually I thought, you know what, I'm not going to use the glue gun because not everyone might have a glue gun at home and then I thought, you know what, a lot of people who have florist wire or some string, it's basically the same stuff. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to break off some of this eucalyptus and do it into some sections because I'm going to scatter this throughout to really buff this out because this is getting a little bit looks a bit dark, these are a little bit lighter, these are quite short, I'm just going to add a little bit of length into this. We want to get something that looks really boutique and really, really pretty without having to spend a lot of money. So all of these sort of flowers, they cost under £8. This wreath has been going now for two years, so literally if you cost that amount of times so I do it, I do it every different event, every different season, so I probably get about eight uses a year out of this. So it is well worth buying a wreath and then just changing it up. So hopefully like my pliers are on their way out, but obviously I can't get out to the shops to get a new pair, which is kind of annoying. So we're going to try and break it up. 
best we can. I hope you're all well. Ooh. I'm feeling really crafty lately, like I want to get my crafting on. Is anyone else feeling like that? Like I felt like a stage of, um, I've done some organising, I've done a lot of decorating, and now I'm in a craft mood. I feel like now I've done a lot of the big jobs, I'm sort of feeling like I just want to sit up the table and do a little bit of pottery about. Are we cutting it? Are we cutting it or are we not? Oh yeah, he's come out. Let me call it a him. Does anyone else do that? I always name things. And I, I know what sex they are. I said, that's a him. This plant's a him. Eugene eucalyptus. Right, so once these are all nice and cheap, the little thin ones are really easy. I think it's because that thick bit, that was a few of them stuck together. Um, so I'm just going to break these up. Try and do them individually actually so that it's not... I'm not sitting on the phone just cutting these for hours. Boring ya. <laughs> oh, yeah, so they're all cut up. I'll get rid of that stem. If you don't have any florist wire, but you do have a few of these stems, you can be really nifty. And if you just peel this off, you do actually, these have got like bendy wire in them anyway, because they bend, you probably wouldn't even need florist wire. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the heads of the flowers off of the actual, stems keep these though because we're going to be using a, few, a little bit of this foliage to sort of pop it up pop it like spruce it up a bit add a few different like foliage textures to it you end up with like a sharp bit these are lovely how lovely would these sort of be just stuck on like the wall or in your hair <laughs> like frida carlo i've got my other one and um, with this one i'm like i'm going to do like an asymmetric type shape again very similar to when i done a spring wreath with the um car tire but what i really love is i really love eucalyptus with loads of big peonies and stuff i think they look really really beautiful i'm just really looking forward to this going on the door actually be nice and colorful so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start putting the flowers on first and placing these where i want these to be i kind of want them clustered so i'm going to be hanging the wreath as if where's the most fullest part probably there so i'm going to hold it up this way i'm probably going to try and fill out the, the wreath here and um, so all i'm going to do to start is i'm going to pop it through it will come through all the way to the back and all I'm going to do is I'm going to bend the metal let's see if I can show you I'm just going to bend that metal round the actual metal frame of the, the existing wreath then you don't need to use no glue no wire and it will stay fixed and then once it's all and done, over and done with and you want to change it up there's no damage to the wreath and then just position your flowers to where you would want them I think these are so beautiful these flowers um, so the next thing I'm going to use is probably my other coral thing. Position these and then we'll position the others around it. Now this quite kind of bare here as well. I think there would look really nice. So yet again, pop it through. Oh, it's kind of tricky to try and show you on the camera. Oh. So pop it through and then I'm just going to bend that again around the back of the frame. You don't see none of this when it's all hung up. Not that it's very um, on show anyway, you can't really see it. Make sure the sharp bits are tucked in, because obviously if you're hanging this on a freshly painted door or on a wall, make sure the sharp bits are not on there in case it scratches up the paint. Um, so just bends the sharp bit in towards back into the wreath to the front. Um, so we've got our little peonies, I think they are on there. So now I'm gonna add like a pink peony. Now I've got, a, I wanna sort of add these to it, but I don't want it to look too Sparsy, so I think a nice pink one there, perhaps. It's really good to just try this out and position a few to see where you might want them. I'm thinking the white's a bit, I don't know. Put the white one there and then hold that in place a sec. And then perhaps put the pink one like. Yeah, I quite like that. So what I'm gonna do now is these ones haven't got a sharp point on the back of them. So all I'm gonna do is get a bit of florist while you can get some string. I'm gonna cut some off. And under the back of these hydrangeas, you've got all these kind of like little loops. I'm just gonna loop it through a couple of them, like stems. Bring it back round so it's sort of looped round it. I'm gonna twist the little knot into it so it's kept nice and tight. And then you'll just have two little bits hanging off it. So once you position this into a position that you like it, then we can um, 
then we can um, pop it through the same way. Now this might not go through all the way, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just twist this round, whatever leaves you have here, bring a couple forward, and then twist the two back parts of the metal behind it, and then just give it a little twist, so this is quite easy to undo, don't start knotting it and stuff too tight, just a few little twists will hold it in place against the weather. If I can get you a bit close to you, you'll be able to see it's just a little twist. Um, and then we're gonna push the leaves back and position it to where we want it to be, which I think looks really, really pretty. Yeah, push that peony back up, a little bit of space. It, bring a bit of eucalyptus. We're gonna eucalyptus this up, so it ain't, ain't gonna be so blocky of just flowers on this side. But I really like, you know, like when you see on Instagram these beautiful big florists, and they're in London. They've got the most beautiful pink and sage doors, and they've got all these floral like bushes hanging on the like reefs on the door. We're gonna do this for a fraction of the price. So once you get your initial outlay of your reef, which I know a lot of you have because you've done it at Christmas or autumn time, we've done the pumpkins in it. And once your initial outlay is, you're talking each time maybe about six, seven pound, and that's if you're changing up the flowers. To be honest, these are very similar to the ones we use at Valentine's, so you could use these type ones, or the other spring wreaths. So you will end up having a big selection of what you use anyway, and then you can kind of just add more to it. So I'm thinking of this one kind of here. So again, I'm gonna do the same technique as what I just done with the hydrangeas. Trying to make this one a little bit more down in towards the circle of the wreath, because the hydrangea is kind of on the outside. So just bring this one down to give a little bit of symmetry. Yet again, just twist it. Don't go too mad with the twisting, because we do want to undo these, because we're going to be using these wreaths again. Um, and then we end up with a really, really pretty floral arrangement. Now this is all looking a little bit empty and a little bit sparse, and I would really like to add a little bit of texture to this. So I think what would really make this look pretty is to start adding a few of our eucalyptuses. Now, I think a few eucalyptus branches plonked through where the actual flowers are as well will really break this up. So like these sort of like this big bushy hydrangea there. If we just pop a few of these eucalyptus. Now these just literally pop in. They're not going anywhere. We'll break it up a little bit. And how boutique and pretty is this starting to look? It's really starting to take shape. And then what I'm going to do is I want to have that symmetry there. So I'm going to do the opposite corner. I'm just going to pop a few extra ones in. I'm going to get a nice long one because I feel like we need a long one there. These really long ones, so you've not got sticks plucking out. Plucking out. I was going to say plonking and then poking at the same time out. You can just wrap them like I did with the um, other flowers at the back. Kids are having a little play. Um, and just pop them in. I'm gonna, while we've got that symmetry, really make it a little bit larger here. Pop them through. And then we've got a nice big one here as well. So I think we're gonna start to go up the roof. Pop this through the back. This one is definitely going to need twisting just because it's quite long at the back. So then it just you can sort of twist it back into itself. So there's not going to be no sharp pieces hanging out the back, scratching up your walls or the doors or anything that you've got. Um, and these little ones that I've got, they can just be plonked in. If you want to fix these with florist wire, you're more than happy to, but I can shake all that and they're not going to come out anywhere. They're absolutely fine. If you live in a really windy area and you scan on your front door and you feel a little bit nervous about your floristry, then obviously secure it with a little bit of string or a little bit of rope um, or some florist wire. Now, I'm going to start adding some of this foliage here. So all of this foliage, they come on these stems. Now, these ones from the hydrangea actually pop off. So you could hot glue, the, uh, hot glue these on. I'm not going to just for the purposes of this because... I want to just show you, so I think because that's a hydrangea, it'd be kind of nice if we had the hydrangea leaves next to the hydrangea, so it looks like it's almost just been picked, and it's sort of like, it's just looking really, really beautiful. Um, and these are some of the leaves off of the bright pink coral um, peonies, and I think if we start adding a few of these in the more sparse areas, some of the leaves, like I say, you can affix these or 
you don't have to. And we've got like a little bit of a sparse area down here. So try and fill out any gaps you may have. I've got a little one up top there and a tiny one down there. So I'm going to break off a few more. Um, some of these are really long as well. Some of these you get really long ones, like big. These are kind of like that. Um, do you know what this would look really pretty? And I'm seeing a lot of like little girls' bedrooms. Oh, sorry, I do apologise for my battery. <laughs> Not a shocker. You do get these really beautiful kind of like botanical bedrooms with these sort of on the wall. A huge one of these would look amazing. Um, I might have to make one for my little niece um, that's on the way. Uh, she'll be here next month. I can't wait. And just you can just plunk these in, pull them right in tight. Make sure that once you've got them in, you share some of the eucalyptus and spread it around the front through the leaves so it's not just a big <laughs> chaotic leaf sticking out of it. You've got to try and blend it in as if it's almost just been there the whole time and you just didn't notice it. We've got to try and make it like a wreath that we're incorporating that we haven't quite made up yet. I think that's a bit too big, actually. I'm saying about, let's have it big. I think maybe like a free stem one would look a bit better. But that's what's nice. You can always fix these on later. Um, but it's nice just to have a little fiddle about and see what you like. And what would be really nice with this is if you sort of put like a really big sort of like hanging pink ribbon. I haven't obviously been to the shop, so I can't get none of that. I wish I could, um, but I can't. Um, and once it's all over, I suppose I could get some and then hang it on, but I'm really, really happy with that. It's just a quick little little wreath tutorial. I'm pretty sure you have, if you already have the crafting um, wreath, because I know loads of you did when we've done all the other wreaths throughout, um, then you would already have these. And I know so many of you guys have got the eucalyptus from the last crafts we've done, or even flowers in jugs. If you fancy a little wreath on the door and change something up and give it a little bit of spice and you want to add a little bit of something to your home to make you feel happy during isolation, then you might already have these. If not, have a little look on YouTube, a little tutorial on how to make paper flowers. Perhaps you and your children can make some paper flowers to add to your wreaths that you have. And um, yeah, get crafting. Obviously, I did do a wreath where I made it out of like a circle tire, like steering wheel cover and do. I will link that below in the description box below as well, in case you want to have a little check that out, because I know some of you might already have like round objects that you might be able to just put some jute or some string around and make your wreaths rather than needing a solid base wreath. Also, if you have wire hangers, you can sort of shape that into a circle, add the foliage to that. That would look really beautiful as well. There's loads of things you can use. Um, heart-shaped decorations or heart wreaths that you've got, any different things, wicker hearts, anything you want, you can. Um, and I just think that this looks really, really beautiful. Grab a little, like, bit more of an arrange. I'm going to make sure that coral one's a little bit over the white because I feel like I'm enjoying that coral a little bit more than I am. That's it, the white. So this has been my little summer wreath. I can't wait for this to go on the door. I think it's going to be a nice contrast to the dark grey that we painted in there. And I'm absolutely loving it. Um, also, while I've got your attention, I wanted to show you, a lot of you guys, I was telling on when we done the hallway um, decor, that we've got the light switch covers. Now, we went on, I thought I got them from Amazon. I do apologise, guys, they're off of eBay. I will also link them below as well. I think they're about five, six pounds, depending on what size and colour that you get. But, obviously, there's no electricians about that's going to be going into people's houses at the moment. These are delivery, and they can be contactless delivery. So, they leave them on the doorstep and then go. Deliveries are the best way forward at the minute. Um, but we've ordered these because we need the whole of our house are like the old white light switches. Now it's going to cost quite a bit of money to have them all changed. Now yes you can buy them for about seven, eight pounds from like places at home bargains or the range, but most electricians charge a set fee per set of plugs that they change over for you. And also if your walls are really old like ours, they might crumble around with the plaster because our plaster are plastered around our old shape and a lot of the new plug sockets are a little bit smaller. So we might end up with a little bit of stuff that needs filling. So I'll show you because these are really, really, oh, you got my thumb there. Ooh. Um, so these are the light switch covers. They're not perfect. You obviously can still see the white um, through it and they just screw through. So you take the screws out of the white plug, you put these on top, put the screws in. They come with these silver screws as well. And they're just really lovely. They finish it off a little bit more, make it less of an eyesore that they're like, and we're a little bit, um, sorry, Ooh, pop you back down. And we're a little bit, gone a bit like a, 
a yellowy creamy white where they're so old. I don't know when they were fitted, obviously not in the 1930s when the house was built. Um, but they're really nice, we've got them in the hallway now as well and they're really lovely and I wanted to see how they looked on the double switches because on that double switch, the switches are widely parted but the ones in the hallway are next to each other. So I knew they'd work in the hallway but I weren't sure and I wanted to see if that fitted first before I start getting the single ones in here. So I've just gone online ordered more for the single switches and when you just think you can take them off when you're painting you don't have to be an electrician to do that you don't have to turn the electric off before you like take them off it's literally just the two screws or actually turn the electric off i'm not i'm not implying that in case you electrocute yourself turn the electric off before you touch plug sockets um, but they were really simple to put on it literally was unscrewing sticking it on and then re-screwing the screws there's no glue no mess being left whenever we redecorate i can take them off i haven't got to worry about masking taping it up because the covers go back on and um, yes, I thought I'd show you because I did say I'd show you and I'm going to link them below in the description box as well. So we've done our little summer rave, summer dream. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed and give it a thumbs up if you want to. Obviously, if you don't want to, that is absolutely fine. We're still in the club. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. So, and thank you as well for all the lovely comments. I still haven't said thank you for all the lovely comments that you give when I've done my, like, um, my Q&A. It was absolutely amazing. I weren't expecting all the lovely feedback that I got and all the lovely comments. And I hadn't had time to sit down and message back to you all, but I just really feel grateful. It was so lovely. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Take care. Stay safe. Stay home. I've been Rosie Henshaw. See you later. Bye.